federal government to revive the aluminum smelter company within the next two years? Fight against terrorism gets tougher. High-profile Nigerians involved in terrorism financing to face prosecution. Kidnapped Afaka students reunite with families. Plus, Supreme Court affirms nullification of 74 political parties deregistered by INEC. Good evening and thanks for joining us on NTA Network News. I am Jumwe Yusuf. Adeola Kami Akere joins us from Lagos and Asamao Abibu Shagari is in our Sokoto studio. We do apologize for starting the news late, but Adeola will begin the news now. Adeola, over to you. Adeola, over to you. Jumai. The Nigerian Customs Service, a Papa Area Command, has increased its revenue generation into the federal government's coffers for the month of April by 64 percent. Area controller Malanta Yusuf said the feat was achieved on the resilience of officers and men of a command. Abolade Salami reports. The Nigerian Customs Service of Papa Area Command act as the country's watchdog at the seaport to ensure accurate payment of revenue due to the federal government. In compliance with this, the command in the month of April jacked up its earnings to 65.4 billion naira, showing an increase of 25.5 billion naira in the month under review, as against what was generated in the same month of 2020. The command in its anti-smuggling drive seized a 4 by 40 feet container laden with unregistered pharmaceutical containing 674 cartons of tramadol tablets and 805 cartons of codeine syrup. And we are ready, but ready, to stop this kind of, kind of imputation because it is detrimental to the health of our citizens. And for any uh, right-thinking Nigerian, I don't think such kind of imputation should be entertained or even to bring it the intention of bringing this thing to destroy some of your citizens. Controller Yusuf, while reaffirming the commitment of officers of the command to uphold professionalism, advised herring operators at the seaport to desist from all forms of irregularities. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. Now promoting investment and trade opportunities between Nigeria and Tanzania is a practical demonstration aimed at meeting objectives of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement targeted at deepening intra-trade relations for economic prosperity of the continent. Amaka Owo reports that these were re-echoed by speakers at the Tanzania-Nigeria Tourism Investment and Trade Meeting held in Lagos. Tanzania is located in East Africa and one of the ten largest economies in the continent. The country prides itself in the area of tourism and home to the highest mountain Kilimanjaro in Africa. And it attracts more than a million tourists annually. The Tanzanian High Commissioner to Nigeria and other representatives say with the projected economic growth expected to increase from 4.7% in 2021 to 5.8% in 2022, it is important to deepen bilateral relations between both countries. To promote economic cooperation between the two sister countries in the areas of tourism, investment, trade and development financing. The private sector in Nigeria is expected to play a leading role in achieving the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. This event will expose participants to new and existing investment opportunities in agribusiness, tourism, distributive trade, mining and manufacturing in both countries. With the African uh, Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, there are now new opportunities elsewhere, not just in Tanzania, but in the region. It concretize the abstraction. And the beauty of it is that it is the private sector that will drive the process. The Nigerian-Tanzanian bilateral relations dates back to the 1960s. In Lagos, Samaka O, NTA News. 
Traders at Cairo Market, Oshodi, Lagos, are still counting their losses after a late-night inferno destroyed goods worth millions of naira in the market. Adenini Taiwo, who was at the scene, now has an update. This is what is left of Cairo Market in downtown Oshodi, Lagos, after a mysterious fire broke out late Thursday evening. Cairo Market is popular for jewelries, lace materials, wedding accessories and other fashion items. Most of those are now in ruins along with these shops after the extensive damage created by the fire. It affected 66 shops, 4 offices and 25 containerized shops. Most shop owners in this market are now in shock bemoaning their fate. I say shoe, ladies bag, ladies horse, adult shoe, children's shoe, everything is burned. The market has been cordoned off by security agencies and other first responders who are working to ensure that normalcy is returned. But what is agitating the minds of crowd who have gathered here to sympathize uh, with victims is what may be the cause of the fire. For now, there is no official statement yet, but the people are saying that the fire might have been caused by improvised explosive device, accounting for the extensive damage suffered by the market. There is some suspicion that it could be a, a sort of a explosive or explosion. We will look into it. Fortunately, a part of the market was not destroyed in the fire. Still, it may take a while for trading activities to resume in this place as investigation and other damage control efforts continue. From Cairo Market. That's still the network news. The news will continue after this break. Please stay with us. And welcome to Sokoto on Network News. The Indonesian government has expressed readiness to partner with Sokoto State Government and the Sultanate Council to bring an end to street begging in the state. Indonesian Ambassador to Nigeria, Air Vice Marshal Usra Hendra Harahab, stated this when he paid a courtesy visit on the Sultan. Sheikh Mohammed Deti completes the report. This is the third time the Indonesian Ambassador is visiting the Sultan of Sokoto with a deal to cement in brotherhood between Sokoto State and Indonesia. Ambassador Yusra Hendra said Sokoto is the first state in Nigeria that the Indonesian government established diplomatic action with. This time, the visit of the ambassador and his entourage is to seek support from the Sultan to establish another diplomatic tie with the Kebi State government. Probably, inshallah, for this year, uh, to communicate about the uh, Cooperation or the relationship between Indonesia and Nigeria, especially for Sokoto State. Sultan Muhammad Saad Abu Bakr described the visit as a reunion and strengthening of Islamic Brotherhood between the Sultanate and the Indonesian government. The Sultan said Islam is unity, hence the need for Muslims world over to unite and speak with one voice. The Indonesian ambassador was selected to the palace by the chairman of the Qatar Endowment Commission, Muhammad Lawal Meduiki. In Sokoto, Shio Muhammad Deti, NTA News. More than 90 co-members have received the first dose of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine in Gusau, Zamfara State. This marks the commencement of the vaccination for the core members and the NYSC staff in the state. Jamila Ibrahim has more. The National News Service Corps recently announced the commencement of the COVID-19 vaccine administration on core members and its staff across the country. Accordingly, the first round of the inoculation exercise has commenced in Zamfara State. At more than 90 core members have so far received the vaccine. <laughs> The 
one on this expressed readiness to key into the public enlightenment drive on the safety and efficacy of the vaccine as routine immunization officers and for state primary health care board debunk suruma on adverse reactions resulting from the inoculation. The administration of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine is going on at the NYC offices across Zamfara State in Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. And that's it from Sokoto. The news will continue with Jumai in Abuja. Good evening. Thank you so much, Asma'u. Now let's bring you up to speed with news making the rounds across the country. The federal government says it will focus more attention on greater development of irrigation facilities across the country and encourage more people into agricultural production. President Mohamed Buhari made the pledge during the sixth regular meeting with the Presidential Economic Advisory Council led by Professor Doin Salami. State House correspondent Adam Sambu has more. Describing agriculture as a good way to overcome Nigeria's economic challenges, President Muhammadu Buhari stressed the need for the citizens to go back to the land. Technology, he said, is doing away with petroleum, but Nigeria is lucky to have other resources, especially gas and vast arable land, yet to be adequately explored and exploited. The Presidential Economic Advisory Council had told the president that only 2% of land under cultivation in Nigeria is irrigated. On the security challenges, which the council says is having great repercussions on the economy, President Buhari charged leadership at every level to go back to the basics, noting that a bottom-up approach is necessary. He decried the situation in which some unscrupulous people tried to undermine every policy of government, irrespective of the good it is meant to achieve for the country. As he puts it, during the closed-door engagement, some people are mercilessly against this country. We close the borders to control the smuggling of petroleum products and check the influx of illegal goods, arms and ammunition. Yet I got a call from the Controller General of Customs that 40 tankers laden with petrol had been impounded. As the President explained, he instantly directed that both the fuel and the trucks be sold and the money be deposited in the Treasury. President Buhari is also worried that arms and ammunition are still smuggled into the country despite his order to shoot anyone found with AK-47 rifles illegally, saying people must show consideration for their own country. The chairman, Presidential Economic Advisory Council, Professor Doin Salami, submitted that the global economy has continued to improve as COVID infections drop and rollout of vaccination intensifies. He said the Nigerian economy, though out of recession, remains fragile with rising inflation, unemployment and weak external account. The council therefore recommended, amongst others, decisive end to all forms of insecurity in the country, mobilization of resources for investment, hastened implementation of agricultural reform policies, passage of the Petroleum Industry Bill, poverty reduction, employment generation, as well as incentives for private investment in irrigation to promote all year round farming. From the State House, Adamusambu, NTA News. State House, Adamusa. The aluminium smelter company of Nigeria, Ascon, is to be reactivated before 2023. The Minister of State Mines and Steel Development, Uche Chukuoga, disclosed this during a meeting with Governor Udom Emmanuel. Susan Asuko reports. The minister during the visit revealed that President Muhammadu Buhari has directed that the aluminium smelter company of Nigeria, Auscon, located at Ikolabas local government area, be revamped, stressing that the company will begin operation before the end of 2023. While assuring that the company will be revived soon, Oga explained that with the intervention of the federal government, the existing legal issue involving the company will be resolved for work to commence. The minister also sued for collaboration with the state government to create a heat-free atmosphere for solid mineral exploration, as this will create opportunities for employment and wealth creation. The federal government has agreed that 13 percent of the mineral exploited from a state goes to the revenue of a state. So we're looking at how to collaborate, to synergize with the state government so that we can have good relationship between the Ministry of Mines and Steel and the state. 
Governor Odom Emmanuel commended President Muhammadu Buhari for the initiative to revamp ALSCON and described the move by the federal government as a step in the right direction, noting that the reactivation of ALSCON will stimulate the country's economy. Much of interest is the ALSCON that I just mentioned. Even if it didn't come by anything solid minerals, mere mentioning that Arscon will fire back before they leave office, and I know he's a man of integrity, uh, that he, he will lose his sleep in order to make sure Arscon is fired back. As a state, we are willing to, and we are ready to as well, give all the necessary support. In Uyo, Susan Asukwa, NTA News. To the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa has presented the 2018, 2019 and 2020 budget performance of the office. This was before the members of the Senate Committee on Federal Character and Intergovernmental Affairs who were on oversight visit. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Soko reports. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, is a regular visitor to the National Assembly. But this time, he is the host. He received members of the Senate Committee on Federal Character and Intergovernmental Affairs who were on ground for oversight. The status of the 2018, 2019 and 2020 budget of the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation was the main reason for this visit. Over the years, the committee has appropriated funds to the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation to ensure its proper functioning and services delivery Boss Mustafa explained that out of the 2.02 billion Naira capital appropriation in 2018, only 782.9 million was released, while 12.2 billion of 2019 and 1.5 billion of 2020 were fully released. You will notice that there has been an increase from 2 point something to 12 point something. If you look at the performance, capital performance, uh, of 2019, you realize that it was in 2019, earlier before 2019, I think 2018, that uh, the National Assembly, your National Assembly passed the bill establishing the Northeast Development Commission. And uh, initially, they were in the presidency. So you will see that the, uh, the uh, 10 billion naira there was meant for the Northeast Development Commission. The Parliamentary Committee advised that a formal request should be made by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation for the construction of an office that will accommodate all special aids of Mr. President. In Abuja, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. A draft national policy on welding and its related fields is underway with the federal government's assurance that it is aimed at promoting and enhancing local content which will drive rapid industrialization of the country. Minister of Science and Technology Dr. Gbonaya Onu confirmed this during the inauguration of a committee to work on this draft policy. The policy aimed at strengthening local content, the minister says, will foster keeping Nigerian jobs for Nigerians and reduce capital flight arising from the importation of skilled manpower. The minister also disclosed that the federal government is carrying out serious, intense and sustained efforts to revive the steel industry so as to improve the social economic fortunes of the country. House of Representatives Committee on Petroleum Resources Upstream has summoned the group managing director NMPC and all petroleum exploration companies involved in the revocation and reaward of some oil mining leases to appear before it. This follows the inability of the petroleum companies to honor the committee's invitation for investigative airing. National Assembly correspondent Abdullahi Aminu reports. The investigative hearing is to ensure adherence to due process in the recent oil mining leases 123, 124, 126 and 137. Minister of State for Petroleum Timmy Prey Silva explained to the committee the powers surrounding the decision as enshrined in the constitution. The president has not even withdrawn the revocation because NMPC is not in a position to ask for a withdrawal of a revocation granted duly. 
The committee members found that the inability of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Company, NNPC, and other oil exploration companies to appear and submit their documents on the issue. All letters we sent to them are rooted through the GMD. And he told us, yes, that is the procedure. So we equally expect him to be the one signing all letters coming to this committee, henceforth. Thursday 20th, this month is fixed for the continuation of the investigation from the National Assembly, Ablai Aminu, NTA News. The international wing of the Port Harcourt International Airport, Omogo, has been reopened for operations after a year of lockdown. This followed the certification of the airport in accordance with COVID-19 protocols by the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. Kinsley Amajiri reports. The reopening of the international wing of the airport at a time the second and third wave of coronavirus is spreading across countries necessitated the need for the latest certification to ensure strict compliance with the COVID-19 protocols. The management of the airport engaged stakeholders at the airport towards a smooth enforcement of the new standard operating procedure. We've just been giving a go-ahead by NCA the industry regulator that uh, we can commence international flight operation immediately. What is most typical to us because of the COVID-19 now, especially is the arriving passenger. There are more stringent um, protocol for arriving passengers. To some of the airline operators, this good news is long awaited but not without its challenges. As the airline, we are ready because we have been, uh, we are WHO certified. You know, so, and the Port Health Organization here in, uh, at the airport, they've also screened us and they've, they've checked our protocols. It's a new era concerning you know, COVID-19. And so it's not business as usual. We need to inform them you know, that things have changed. With the reopening of the airport's international wing, keen observers want those charged with the health and security protocols to be up and doing, not leaving anything to chance. In Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amajiri, NTA News. The federal government will soon commence the prosecution of high-profile Nigerians suspected to be engaged in financing acts of terrorism undermining national security and stability. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abu Bakr Malami, announced this while speaking to correspondent Adam Musambu in the State House. As you actually know, sometimes back there were certain convictions of Nigerians allegedly involved in terrorism financing in the United Arab Emirates. That gave rise to a wider and far-reaching investigations in Nigeria. Arising from the investigation, there exist certainly reasonable grounds for suspicion that a lot of Nigerians have profile, institutional and otherwise, are involved in terrorist financing and they have been profiled for prosecution. So in essence, uh, the, it is indeed true that the government is indeed initiating processes of prosecuting those high-profile individuals that are found to be financing terrorism. It is indeed true. How many of them have so been arrested? Well, as to the number, as uh, because the investigation is ongoing and uh, uh, it has to be conclusive before one can arrive at a, a certain number. But one thing I can tell you is a large number and uh, the, uh, they have been profiled for prosecution. It is indeed a large number and I am not in a position to give you with precision the number as at now because the profiling and investigation is ongoing. So what is the message the government is now sending to those with the habit of financing terrorism? Well, the message is clear. Nobody is going to be spared. No, no stone will be left unturned. We shall certainly and aggressively pursue those people that are involved in terrorist financing as far as the Nigerian state is concerned. Of the Federal College of Forestry Mechanization, Afaka in Kaduna State, say they will not be deterred by their experiences in the hands of abductors as they are resolved to continue their academic pursuits. Suleiman Abdullah Rigachuku reports that this is coming shortly after they were reunited with their families. Tears of joy, excitement, and gratitude to God as the abducted students reunite with their families. 
I hope to come back and continue with my studies. I see this as a pathway to success. We pass through hungry, striking, whatsoever. We pass through insult. But unfortunately, they did not assault any of us. They did not kill any of us. So we just thank God. For 55 days, they were in captivity of bandits who have kidnapped them from their college hostel midnight of the 11th of March. Yes, I'm very happy because uh, the trauma we went through, the trauma we went through for these 58 days has been undue by the joy we have today. God is so wonderful. He has had the cries of we the poor people because most, we all, almost all the parents in this very school, we are masses. So God has heard the cries of the masses. The advice and suggestion on the lips of the state commissioner of police and also the parents, likewise the teachers, is that this challenge should be a source of strength for the students to come back in full force and continue with their studies. The command is appealing to the general public for more support in terms of information sharing and prompt report of incidents we are our dedicated phone numbers. Umar Muri also gave assurance that the police are making frantic efforts for the rescue of the kidnapped students of Greenfield University. Suleiman Abdullah Rigachku, NTA News. The Benue State stakeholders have resolved, among others, to fully enforce the law to provide for the establishment of community volunteer guards, otherwise known as vigilantes. Governor Samuel Autumn, who chaired the meeting, said the decision is informed by the recent surge in banditry and other vices. Charles Abba reports. The Benue State Stakeholders Meeting appreciated the security agencies for their efforts in ensuring relative peace in parts of the state. In the face of banditry, kidnapping, hesmen attacks, and other crimes, the security agencies have done well. The meeting, however, resolved that the renewed attacks on the people by bandits have outstretched security agencies in the state. Therefore, the Benue State Government should fully enforce the law to provide for the establishment of community volunteer guards, vigilante, and for the purposes connected therewith, which was enacted in the year 2000. The governor emphasized that recruitment of the vigilante should be carried out in the 23 local government areas of Benue State. There will be a state coordinating unit, uh, which will include uh, my humble self, my deputy, the SSG, the Attorney General, other people as may be applicable. The meeting also emphasized the need for all stakeholders to join hands in tackling insecurity in Benue State devoid of political, religious and ethnic sentiments. It unanimously passed a vote of confidence on the governor, Charles Abba, NTA News. Still talking security, the police this afternoon restored order and calmness as it returned to parts of the FCT where members of the proscribed sheds protested. The police professionally dispersed the protesters and arrested 49 members of the group. The FCT police command through its spokesperson, ASP Yusuf Mariam, however said one officer, Adama Ezekiel, has died as a result of injuries from knife stabbing. The Supreme Court has affirmed the nullification of the 74 political parties deregistered by the Independent National Electoral Commission. In a statement delivered by Justice Adamujaro, the court affirmed that deregistration of the NUP, one of the 74 parties, was done in line with the laws and compliance with the extant provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, and Electoral Act. INEC in deregistering the affected 74 political parties in February 2020 stated that they failed to meet the minimum requirement. In another judgment, the Supreme Court declared the Casino State Government dissolution of local government of elected officials in July 2015 as illegal. The Apex Court ordered that dissolved elected council officials be paid all their entitlements from the date of their illegal dissolution to the date they were to vacate office. The court described the act of the state government as illegal. Also, this Friday, the Apex Court declared the dissolution of the elected officials of the local government in Oyo State as illegal. The court ordered the Oyo State government to pay all the salaries and allowances of the elected officials from the date of their illegal dissolution to the end of their tenure. 
The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, is planning to convert 753 voting points in Ocean State to polling units to allow more eligible voters during the 2022 governorship election in the state. The resident electoral commissioner in Ogun State, Olusha Gwagwaji, stated this at the INEC stakeholders meeting in Okshobu. Femi Afiarago reports. During the last general elections in Nigeria, over 1.6 million registered voters in Ocean State alone had to make use of 3,010 polling units, which created a lot of inadequacies, such as overcrowded polling units and disruption of the process in some centers. With the population growth and establishment of new settlements in many areas across Ocean State, INEC has embarked on expansion of voter access by adding 753 polling units to existing ones. Oshun Resident Electoral Commissioner Olushe Gwagbaje highlights advantages of the exercise to include addressing decline in voter turnout. The all these will also be considered and once they are okay, they will be ratified and then they will become full-fledged polling units across the country. Stakeholders welcome the move by INEC but cautioned against the good intention being hijacked by politicians. INEC promised to deploy voter enrollment devices to the proposed new polling units for continuous voter registration exercise scheduled to commence on June 28, 2021. In Oshogbo Femi Afariogun, NTA News. Former National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Adams Oshomale, has condemned those calling on President Muhammadu Buhari to hand over to the military, describing their actions as unpatriotic and undemocratic. This was while addressing journalists in Abuja. Salu Abdullahi Gwanara reports. Nigeria, like other developing nations, is being threatened by the activities of criminals targeted at undermining the security and unity of the country. This development has created a platform for public discussions. Former National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Adams Oshomole, in this forum wants Nigerians, particularly the elder statesmen, to have faith in the unity of the country and collectively resist calls for separation and change in government. I think that even in a moment of distress, and regardless of what anybody thinks, the world is resolved and Nigeria is part of it that never again shall we be governed by an unelected government. Never. We don't want unelected angels. I'm not also happy with those who, who, who take off dismembering this Nigeria. Uh, let everybody go his way. Uh, Nigeria is not a reality and so on. That diversity should be an asset. Similarly, the Forum of Buhari support groups at a media briefing said there is nothing to worry about the security situation in view of the ongoing efforts to addressing them. The Buhari-led administration has done so much in putting the infrastructure in place in transport sector and road construction. Equally, massive agricultural revolution is going on with rice and other foodstuffs that Nigeria has not only become a self sufficient, but also exporting to our neighboring countries to increase the foreign exchange. They insist that the people must remain in the forefront of security from their localities in Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi Gwanara, NTA News. We we'll take a breather now. When we return, more news. Do stay. <laughs> You can get more news and updates on www.nta.ng or follow us on our Twitter handle at NTA News Now. You can also like us on Facebook at www.facebook forward slash NTA Network News and also stay connected and subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash NTA News Online. Also remember to watch our news live streaming at www.nta.ng forward slash live. You're welcome back. Akwa Ibo State has been nominated for a 5 billion Naira health and social development grant from Boa Group. Governor Udom Emmanuel disclosed this while receiving the nomination letter from the chairman Boa Group, Al Hadi Abdul Samad Rabiu. Susan Asuko tells us more. 
The African Fund for Social Development and Renewal is an initiative of BUA Group for Charity and to Give Back to the Society. In appreciation of Governor Dom Emmanuel's effort in the health sector, BUA Group nominates the state for a 5 billion naira health care and social development grant. Governor Dom Emmanuel, while receiving the letter of nomination, appreciated the partnership between the group and the state government. The governor stated that with the grant, an enduring structure and tertiary health care development system will be put in place in the state. He's aware that we have established centers in almost each of the federal constituencies in this state. And we've invested so much in secondary health care delivery system. So Enduring. Representative of the chairman of Boa Group, Mr. Kabiru Rabiu, says the donation is to complement the. We apologize for the shortcut in that report. First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Muhammadu Buhari, has called on well meaning Nigerians to extend their hands of assistance towards supporting the needy and all the less privileged persons, especially in this holy month of Ramadan, for a better society. The First Lady made the call in a message during the presentation of food items to grassroots people across the traditional councils of the Federal Capital Territory. State House correspondent Aliu Kabil reports. The traditional councils within the Federal Capital Territory have received the gesture of the First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Muhammadu Buhari. Rice, sugar, vegetable oil and cutting across the Emirate Councils of Kuje, Buari, Karshi, Abaji, Gwagwalada, Garki and Karu, as well as the Sarkin House of Abuja. The First Lady, in a message, has urged them to use the items judiciously and to ensure rich to the masses. Her Excellency has asked us to give it to the traditional rulers because they are more closer to the people and they know who needs it most. That is why we're here today. To as usual, that is her aim, for them to have succor. We thank the first leader that gave us these uh, items. I think it will help us a lot. Because at all times, our subjects, they are always on our neck. So when we get back to the community, they will also benefit from us. Uh, we are very appreciated with what we have collected. And we are praying for us to stay long and do another thing again. I will take it to my boss. That's Sir Ken also of Abuja. He will share it to his people. Everybody will receive his message. The First Lady reaffirmed not to lend in her effort of supporting women, youth, and children, especially those at the grassroots. In Abuja, Ali Ukabir, NTA News. Leaders who live exemplary lifestyle would always be cherished by those who wish to learn to be good. Governor Mohamed Inouye Haya stated this while distributing the food materials donated to the people of Gombe State by the Buhari for All Initiative. Correspondent Emmanuel Akila has details of the report. Buhari for All Nigeria Initiative is an organization comprising members from all over the country who hold the ideals of President Muhammad Buhari in high esteem prior to his election as the president of Nigeria in 2015. Governor Mohamed Inoua Yahaya, who flagged of the distribution of food materials donated to the people of Gombe State, said the women who are mostly in the kitchen should be the receivers of the kind gesture, describing the president as a humble leader with virtues that foster unity of Nigeria. God will answer our prayers and by his grace, Nigeria will go back to its normal situation and move forward so that the people can enjoy the benefits of democracy. Leadership of Buhari for All Nigeria Initiative appreciate the faithfulness of all members for supporting the president to provide the leadership needed to unite the country to ensure growth and development. Uh, people like him in all the 36 states, which they are ever ready to continue from where President Muhammad Buhari stopped. Since the first time Baba Buhari came out, he has been getting our support, the support of the people of Gombe. The women folk are happy that President Muhammad Buhari is living up to their expectations despite the COVID-19 pandemic and security challenges in some parts of the country.
Buhari for All Nigeria Initiative has coordinators from the world's to the national levels in all the states of the country. In Gombe, Emmanuel Akila, NTN News. In the spirit of Ramadan, the Baba Buhari for All organization has donated some rice to be shared among the less privileged across the 21 local government areas of Adamawa State. Nafisa to Abdul Hamid Dembos reports. Feeding the needy, especially in the month of Ramadan, is one among the good deeds that attract rewards from Allah, and Muslims are encouraged to make it their watchword. It is in the light of this, the Baba Buhari for All presented 7,225 kilogram bags of rice to the 226 wards in Adamawa State for distribution to the needy, including Islamic-based organizations. The essence is to reduce some of the difficulties faced by people during Ramadan and to also have some sense of belonging. Now we are in Ramadan, so we believe and we know that there is a lot of hardship you know, in some places, some less privileged people, opens and others. So this uh, organization or association, they decide to send their palliatives across the uh, and uh, uh, state in Nigeria. It's this group that was able to come together, put up some defense here and there, and then come up with this, with this gesture for this uh, Ramadan period. The beneficiaries said the gesture came at the right time and commended the organization for ameliorating some of their difficulties. Adama State is the second in the country where the Baba Buhari for all shared food items in this month of Ramadan. In Yola, Nafisa to Abdul Hamid Dembos, NT News. And that's Network News for tonight. Don't forget to be a star with NTA as we wage war against rape and rapists. I am Jumo Yusuf.